At a time of globalization, when all high streets look the same and design is becoming so uniform, there's a strange bunch of quirky objects that us Brits just won't let go of. Unusual things that strangely survive. After all, we are a nation who love the eccentric, the outsider, and that's what we're here to celebrate. Welcome to British Made. Being British, we like nothing better than a nice cup of tea. Come rain or shine, we've been drinking the hot wet stuff for 350 years. But being British, we couldn't just have a nice simple cup of tea. We had to go and invent a machine that does it for us. Yes, I'm talking about that British design classic, the Tea's Made. The tea's made such a quirky invention. It's the most complicated way you could imagine of making a cup of tea. The tea's made has endured over 70 years and is a British champion, still bubbling, spitting and steaming its way to produce tea each morning. When it worked all right, it was OK. When it didn't work all right, it made a hell of a mess. It was always at the side of the bed. <laughs> My mum used to fill out the water every night before she went to bed. Definitely heard it, um, the shushing noise as the steam was being pushed through to uh, make a cup of tea in the morning. The tea's made is quintessentially British. Other countries had tea making machines, but they were designed very much with the kitchen in mind. It was only the tea-mad British who came up with a machine aimed specifically at the bedroom, bringing together an alarm clock, kettle and teapot. Clever design it may be, but it certainly won't win any prizes in the looks department. But how does one work? Well, for that, you need an expert. Meet Doug. <laughs> who spent the best part of 25 years amassing over 80 models. As the water boils, it will, the steam pressure will be sufficient to drive the water from the kettle into the waiting teapot and the platform will gradually tilt and as it does so, it will put the light, the buzzer and cut out the power to the kettle element and you have a nice cup of tea. For many, the tea's made represents the pinnacle of British eccentricity in design. It was simple, functional and practical, built to last, and you no longer had to make a cup of tea. There was a machine that did it for you. The tea's made was born. So let's take it back to the beginning and those mad individuals with their early tea-making contraptions, which were quite frankly like dicing with death. Some of the early teas maids probably were exceedingly dangerous and it's a miracle that anybody survived them. Um, <laughs> the idea of hot water being uh, pouring out geezer fashion in the bedroom it really isn't very, uh, a <laughs> very safe idea at all. The first commercially produced teas maid was created by a Lancashire clockmaker in 1901 called Albert E. Richardson, who came up with a rather fantastical contraption. A metal arm would strike a match under a methylated spirit stove, which in turn would heat the kettle, which would tip forward and pour into the waiting pot. Tea's up. Of course, there was a distinct possibility that rather than being woken by the smell of freshly brewed tea, you'd be woken by the clicking, boinging and bubbling, the smell of methylated spirits, or even worse, the smell of your house on fire. These early tea-making contraptions had extraordinary names, like the catchy, an apparatus whereby a cup of tea or coffee is automatically made, to a tea waker, and finally, the tea's made. And when it comes to some of the first tea's maids, there's only one person to speak to, the tea's made queen. I originally wanted to have a tea's maid, and my ex-husband wouldn't allow me to have one. He felt they were too bulky and too noisy and I wasn't allowed to have one. Um, so I rebelled a little and I went and bought myself a tea's made. I soon got hooked on them and decided I'd get a second one and it took off from there. 
I now have over 100 teasmaids and a new husband. Personally, I love researching the history of the teasmaids. I get fascinated by discovering new things. My favourite has to be the George Absalom, which I only acquired quite recently. He came up with the name Teasmaid and he submitted an application for that to become a trademark and they believed that because it wasn't made by the banks of the River Tees, it couldn't be called a Teasmaid. His application was rejected. But in 1936, the British vacuum cleaner and engineering company went into production with a very similar model, under the name of the Goblin Teasmaid, but spelt T-E-A. And so the teas made we know today made it onto our shelves. The first ever goblin came with a bedside light, yellow teapot, and a price tag of four pounds. Goblin were very shrewd and advertised it to the middle classes who were struggling to afford domestic servants. How very modern to replace your maid with a machine. At the time, this was uh, around two weeks wages and the average wage was possibly eight or nine pounds. Uh, if we bring that forward to today, where the average wage is £400, that would be the equivalent of £800 for a tea's maid. So you see they were a very luxury item for the middle and upper classes when they came out. But with the tea's maid, there was a fundamental design flaw. The teapot was on the wrong side, which made it very hard to use without scolding yourself, especially if you were right-handed. Eventually, they changed the design and moved the teapot to this side, which made it easier to use. And hey, it only took 20 years to get it right. Design glitches aside, the Teasmaid has remained essentially unchanged, adapting its design only to move with the times. Pre-war plywood was replaced with metal in the late 40s, and by the 50s, plastic, in the form of cream-coloured Bakelite, was the order of the day. Over the years, the design has become more streamlined, with the lamp and clock becoming integral, and even a built-in radio. It promptly became the ultimate luxury item, first on Christmas lists, at the top of every bride and groom's wedding list, and a popular retirement gift. In fact, 50% of Goblin's tea's maids were given as presents. This odd little machine seemed to strike a chord with the tea-drinking public, and no bedside table was complete without one. Britain was soon in the grip of tea's maid mania, and in 1972, Goblin was selling a staggering 10,000 teasmaids a week. But all these thousands of teasmaids were based on just three designs. The popular, with bedside light and ornamental lampshade to complement any bedroom, but you had to provide your own teapot. The standard, with its flexible button control and built-in radio, just oozing style. And the deluxe model, with its stainless steel kettle and matching china, the epitome of tea's made taste. So for many people, the idea of a nice hot cup of tea first thing in the morning with minimal effort is just perfect. After all, it is a labour-saving device, isn't it? You do have to prepare it the night before, fill the kettle, get your tea cups ready, um, find some way of storing some milk, and uh, unfortunately, yes, there's still some work in the morning to do pouring it out. So not labour-saving, and actually not that nice to look at. But the tea's maid still has devoted fans. I've paid over £100 for one, and I would certainly pay more if the right model came along. Uh, so huge did the collection become that I had to build this extension in order to house them and display them. And uh, quite a display, as you can see. Remarkably, the tea's made is still in production today and selling about 30,000 a year, which is nothing compared to the height of tea's made mania in 1972, when they would have sold that number in just three weeks. But despite waning popularity and an increase in coffee drinking culture, as long as the British drink tea, there will always be a place for the teas made. Even though it now seems more of a relic from an innocent age, when hot stuff in bed just meant a nice cup of tea. Next, Humphrey Bogard versus the dark and deadly. He's the enforcer. <laughs>